We are back here on Lock- Phoenix Suns. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Brendan Clean. You can follow me on Twitter at BrendanClean14. I'm a credentialed Suns media member coming to you right after game two of the NBA Finals. The Suns are winners, 118 to 108. Follow our show on Twitter as well, folks, at Locked On PHX Suns, where you can follow along throughout the remainder of the NBA Finals. Who knows how long that will be? It certainly did not seem like it will be very long judging from tonight's result that's what we're here to talk about of course back on youtube welcome welcome it is just my face today of course and uh happy to be here happy to see all of you again happy to have a new audience here on youtube and happy to talk about game two of the nba finals before we dive in today's show is brought to you by Michelob ultra enjoyment isn't the end game it's the whole game at only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. The Suns are winners in game two, 118 to 108. Another double digit victory, putting their record at 13 and 0 in these playoffs when they lead by double digits in a game. The Suns survived 42 points from Giannis Antetokounmpo. And they, of course, were led by Devin Booker, who had 31 points, six assists, as well as seven threes. His 459 points. I'm just geeking out about this win. I'm geeking out about the numbers. I'm geeking out about the performances. His 459 points this postseason are already fourth most for any first-time playoff performer. That is from ESPN Stats and Info. We will get into how the Sun survived this Giannis game thanks to their best shooting night, maybe ever, maybe, of, of this season. How the Suns can keep this level of fight and desperation when the series heads back to Milwaukee this weekend, and a little bit on what this Torrey Craig injury could mean for the Suns. Dario Saric already down. Torrey Craig goes down and does not come back in this game. Unfortunately, bench bigs seem to be dropping like flies at the worst moment for the Suns, but that is a conversation for a different day because here's why Devin Booker was the story tonight. Not just the numbers that I just went through, not just... Um, the fact that he is so young doing this, all of that is special. But it's because he figured the Bucks out. He figured the Bucks out. This guy is 24 years old. He has never been here before, and you would not know it from watching him. This is just what he does. This is what he's done, though, all playoffs, and he continues to do it. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised. He figures Contavious Caldwell-Pope, KCP, Caruso out, ends up scoring 47 in game six in that first round to close out the Lakers. And if you were watching closely, he figured Patrick Beverly out by the end of the Clippers series. If you really were watching before Patrick Beverly got a you know wild hair up his butt and decided to push somebody down and get suspended, he was not doing uh, the same level of job defending Devin Booker as he had. And of course, tonight he figures out Middleton, figures out PJ Tucker, who was a Different matchup that he did not see in game one. After a sub 40% shooting performance in game one, Devin Booker is able to crack the code. I don't know what what word you want to use, but he just dazzled. Started the game two of 10 and figured it out. We'll get more into Devin Booker, folks, in just a second. First, though, today's episode brought to you by Michelob Ultra. Enjoyment isn't the end game. It's the whole game at only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. So this all was necessary too, when you think about Devin Booker and what he was able to do. This was not merely a, you know, flash in the pan. They didn't need it. They did other stuff. No, they they really truly needed this performance because mostly Drew Holiday finally defended Chris Paul, the matchup we saw during the regular season, the matchup that required some other stuff to go right in that regular season for the Suns to beat the Bucks. Not to say that Chris Paul was quiet. He had 23 and eight himself. <clears throat> and especially late, they were able to get him isolated onto Pat Connaughton, players like that. So it's not as if Chris Paul was 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 gone, but you know, 10 fewer points than he had in game one. And um a, a, the the Suns or the Bucks are basically kind of deciding that they're going to load up so much attention on Chris Paul and Devin Booker that they're going to make either those guys beat them with tough shots or the Suns system is going to have to do something. And wouldn't you know it, the Suns actually basically did exactly that. 
So Devin Booker, um, the, the Suns as a whole, 17 of 32 for mid-range tonight. Devin Booker, the second time in his career that he has made seven, at least seven threes. Both of them have come in this postseason. It was a curse that Suns fans will know well. He could not crack six. He's done it twice now, both in huge, huge games. One was that 47 in game six. The other, of course, came tonight. And Booker has proved himself as one of the elite tough shot makers in the entire NBA. That was what part of this finals matchup was billed as, him and Chris Middleton. Well, Booker is in a class of his own. If he keeps doing this, it's hard to imagine who will be better than him in league history. There's only a few. There's 5, 10, 15 players who will have the type of game and the type of career performance, if he can get it done in this series, that Booker has. And we're talking about a player who's only in year six. Tonight in particular as well, one of the things that Booker had to do, I said it was the system and it was the the, the iso ball. It was the, the mano a mano offense that needed to win because Holiday's pressure, the Bucks scheme, very similar to game one in that regard. And in this case, the Suns were able to get a lot of it done in transition. And again, rather than Paul, a lot of that fell to Booker tonight. And he... Um, just finding threes. He, th- these these pull up threes in transition, guys. For those of you maybe who don't watch the Suns very often, I don't know who you would be. He doesn't usually make those shots. Those have been bad shots for him for most of his career. He likes to take them when there's two for one opportunities or just to sort of catch the defense off guard. They aren't usually going to go in, except for all of a sudden in the playoffs. Of course, now he is a a routine gunner from down there and he makes them and the Suns all together tonight had a 166.7 offensive rating in transition this is something the Bucks are supposed to be good at this is supposed to be the area of the game that Milwaukee controls and they once again the Suns took away one of the Bucks main strengths we'll obviously get into Giannis he had plenty going for him in transition but the Bucks as a team were not really up to that they played a lot slower in this game. The pace was um, around 90. It was around 100, I believe, in game one. In this game, uh, you could tell from the, the jump that it was not going to be that type of night. The Suns, though, kept at it, figured it out. Booker was a huge part of it. And let's see, yeah, 92.3 pace, much, much slower. You can tell from the final score as well. Just fewer shots to go around. And so the Suns scoring in those spots when there were transition opportunities is huge. And Booker has always, it's a part that can slip through the cracks of his game because there's so much other dazzling stuff to pay attention to, but he has always been really, really good at getting down the court, beating the defense, get leaking out or with the ball in his hands either way. And so him gearing that offense the way that it needed to go. The Suns were actually outscored on the fast break by 10, courtesy of Giannis but their offensive rating shows it. Booker's leadership in those situations showed it. So here we are. We got a huge Chris Paul game in game one, a huge Devin Booker game in game two. He flashed tonight. What makes him so special as a player and a leader and uh, just a special performance for the first time in a while. He had not had a game like this since maybe game one of the the Western Conference Finals. Um, And in the second round, it wasn't, Most of the time, him that was really, you know, orchestrating the dissection that they did of the Denver of the Denver defense. So much needed, much appreciated, much, much um, his uh, a very historical performance. I think it's going to be one we look back on. And again, a 24 year old doing this and cementing himself as one of the game's best players on the biggest stage So. Let's get next into Milwaukee, the Giannis game that they got and not being able to pull it off. Thanks to, on the other side, the Suns getting a three-point downpour. Two things that you don't expect necessarily to happen. You got the huge superstar game. You got the huge three-point game. They happen in the same night. The Suns emerge victorious. We'll talk about it in just a second. First, though, folks, a quick word from betonline.ag. BetOnline is the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports action. Saw some people online sweating this point spread as well as the over-under for the total points. And again, go bet on these games if it makes it more fun. I personally can't imagine betting on a team that I'm rooting for, but 
it's getting close. It's getting to that point. Make the series even sweeter. Don't even put the result down. Just make some prop bets. Who's going to win MVP? There's no, it's harmless. It's, it's no, it means the Suns already won. If you're betting on which Suns player is going to win MVP, have some fun with it. Check all of it out. Bet online is your one-stop shop. Sign up bonuses, sports news, and then of course, constantly updated contest info for all of sports. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore, folks. This is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their run to the title. What you're going to do is you're going to head to betonline.ag on the web or on their mobile app. You're going to make an account, and when you do, put that first bit of money down. You're going to use the promo code Locked On. That's all one word, of course, the name of our network, and you're going to get a 50% welcome bonus straight to your account. And again, that's betonline.ag on the web or on their mobile app. Promo code locked on when you make your first deposit to get a 50% welcome bonus. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Back here with more on the Suns 118 108 game two victory in the NBA Finals, taking a series lead. 1 0 was their first ever franchise series lead. 2 0 feels beautiful. And uh, this, the Bucks could have had something to say about that. They. They got the performance from their superstar saying he had very much to say about that and seemingly could not get it done. I mean, not seemingly, they could not get it done. Giannis Antetokounmpo, again, 42 points, including 20 in a ridiculous third quarter, despite grimacing, lingering on the ground, needing help up from his from his uh, teammates. And at one point in the fourth quarter, when we thought, okay, he's checking, he's staying in the fourth quarter, with 20 minutes played, maybe he'll get to 40 or with 30 minutes played, maybe he'll get to, to 42 and play the whole fourth. He checks himself out. But all of that said, they get a massive game from Giannis, 42 again, and three blocks, 12 rebounds. It was the game. It was the Giannis game. It was a difference maker on both ends. And yet the Suns were able to handle it because, again, they shot 20 of 40 from three-point range, becoming one of only three teams to do that in the NBA Finals ever. I believe it was the second highest total, if I'm remembering correctly, more specifically as well within that. So everybody got in on this. Jay Crowder, Bridges, who I'm going to talk about in a second. We already hit on Booker with his seven for the second time ever, but they got a career night from Mikhail Bridges, who scored 27 points, his second highest scoring total ever in the NBA and a product of everything that Suns fans have been wanting from him all season long. This is a guy I feel like going into every playoff series that Suns fans have said, oh, he's the X factor. Watch out for Mikhail Bridges. This is the guy to keep an eye on. And of course, we've had a a little bit of a disappointing experience watching this guy. He has not broken out. He's a tentative player. He doesn't always look for his own offense. It's never been a question of if he can make these shots, if he has more off the bounce to his game, he does. He proved that. So on one end, Giannis game. On one end, the role player, three-point shooting, Mikhail Bridges game. You're not rarely going to get one of those, uh, both of those in one game. In this game, it was both. So that contributed. Milwaukee has this golden opportunity, a massive Giannis game. They don't get it done. They wasted it. They wasted it. They're on the road with their superstar playing at that level, and you don't win that game. That is a failure. Um, A few things about why the Giannis stuff did work and why, again, Milwaukee should have been able to take advantage of it. The small ball lineups um, felt like they worked better, mostly because Giannis was so aggressive and was making an impact on defense at a higher level than he was in game one. But I think it's fair to say that the lineups that they put out there with him when they went small were not very smart i mean they they just didn't make sense and even bud was realizing it i think it was to start the second quarter they had Giannis out there with a bunch of bench players i believe it was holiday forbes Connaughton, and portis and then really quickly went from portis to tucker a very um glaring subplot of this game in general is bobby portis this series in general bobby portis not being able to play He was at five minutes in this game. I think he played 12 in game one. So they just have had a hard time finding pieces to put around Giannis when they go small. We know it's the right thing to do sometimes to juice their offense, but who's going to play? I don't think they know. They had Portis on the floor again, and it's just getting impossible to do that. Another reason that they were unable to take advantage, you like 
the offense of Portis and, and Giannis on the floor together, but the Suns are just going to hunt Bobby Portis down over and over and over. We saw that in game one. He's not very good as a help defender, so it's hard to have him you know, go guard the corner because you want a player at the rim to protect if they need to. Bobby Portis is not that guy. He is a, a liability, and it's just restricting the number of players that Bud trusts right now on the Milwaukee side. And then we have to talk about this Drew Holiday situation um you know rightly got a lot of criticism after game one when he shot four of 14 he had a couple misses early that should have gone in just didn't and i think he played the rest of the game worried about that and maybe first time in the finals who knows what the reason was he very much came out aggressive here in game two but that was not the right um not not the right way to go about it i don't think and he was seven of 21 from the field, I think fair to say too aggressive, um, taking shots away from other players, getting out of the offense, taking bad shots some some of the time, mid-range jumpers and forced layups, things like that that are just killers. And only had one turnover, but I would say probably contributed to some broken possessions just by way of um, not seeming to have much of a plan. Again, it's fine to be aggressive, Drew Holiday was, it didn't necessarily make a difference because it wasn't a productive form of aggressiveness. Flipping to the Sun side, the reason that they were able to squelch out this Giannis performance, the reason that they were able to create this onslaught from deep that combated the Giannis game is that they, again, once again, for the umpteenth time this playoffs, adjusted to what they saw from the defense, were one step ahead, did not wait, to make the adjustment, once they saw it, they were ready for the drop defense that Brooke Lopez was going to play. They were ready for Chris Paul being defended by Drew Holiday. They were ready for Milwaukee playing more aggressively offensively and not turning the ball over as much, not taking bad shots, which means less um, transition for the Suns. And they were ready for all of it. It's not just random. Sometimes three-point shooting, of course, it's not always something you have control over. And to the, I, I would say it's even extremely random some of the time. But when you're as focused on it as the Suns were and you get into the rhythm that they were able to get into, it stops being so random. So when they saw that drop defense, the Suns were really aggressive. We talked about this with Gerald Bourget on our show um, preview in game two, talking about in the regular season, the Bucks played that drop most of the time and Giannis was super aggressive, helping from the corner, from wherever he was. That happened tonight. The Suns were quick finding the bat, the pass. The minute that Giannis stunted over, they're going to get the ball to the guy that he just left or whoever's doing that helping. That guy's man is going to receive the pass, open three. And they made him. And they made enough of them, again, to get into that rhythm. Mikhail, Cam, and Jay Crowder all getting in on it. I think Mikhail and, and Jay Crowder both had multiple threes in the first quarter alone. And another little part of that, I think, was Aiton, on the offensive glass, again, four offensive rebounds. Found Chris Paul on a huge corner three off of an offensive rebound. Keeping possessions alive. We know three-pointers are going to be most available off of a miss. And the Suns and Aiton especially looking for that. All of that contributes to this offensive performance. Not to mention Mikhail Bridges. He didn't just get it done from three. In fact, he was only three of nine from deep. A lot of his offense in that career night came off of attacking those closeouts. So it all starts to ripple, right? The Suns make it hard for certain players to be on the floor. They make it hard to execute certain schemes. Once the defense, the opponent, figures out what to do, tries a new thing, the Suns are ready for that. They have a backup plan, and they have new ways now all of a sudden that they are beating you. That's what makes them so tough. So again, you look at what Giannis was able to do. Huge game, 42 points, epic performance. One of only... I think the last player to have a 20-point quarter in a finals game was Michael Jordan in 1993, coincidentally against these Phoenix Suns. So legendary stuff out of Giannis, wasted, because the Bucks do not have answers for what the Suns are doing on offense. All right. We're going to get into next why the Suns have to keep this OO mentality as the series heads to Milwaukee. Their words, not mine. And a little bit more of what we could see in Game 3. First, though, folks, a quick word from... Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar on the planet, my favorite protein bar, and now the salesman of the best flavor that I think Built Bar might have ever had. And I'm not being exaggeratory when I say that. Grass 
Hopper Cookie. Limited time flavor available this week only. If you're listening on Friday, it is the last day to get Grasshopper Cookie, so do not miss out. It is Built Bar's version of a Thin Mint. It is delicious. I powered through my pack, honestly, in an amount of time that I'm not comfortable talking about. They were so good. They really feel like you're getting candy. They really feel like you are getting something that is a treat, not something that is, uh, you know, most of the time a protein bar. It's not anybody's idea of, you know, something special. Protein bar or Built Bar flips that on its head. It's a protein bar that you're going to love. So check out the Grasshopper Cookie before supplies are out or go back to your favorite. Maybe you're a raspberry type of person. Maybe you love cookies and cream, whatever it is, you're going to use the promo code locked on at built.com to get 15% off your next order. Again, that's locked on for 15% off at built.com. Try the grasshopper cookie or any of your favorite built bars. Okay, back here, closing out the show with some thoughts on the OO mentality that the Suns have kept all the way through this playoff run and why they want to keep it all the way through. I don't think it's so cheesy. I really actually do buy some of this stuff. When you cover Monty Williams for the two years that I have, you start to buy into some of these wise, wise quotes and not think of them as silly. But before we get into all of that, folks, today on our road to the finals coverage, we are brought to you by Michelob Ultra. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. And at 2.6 carbs and 95 calories, we can all enjoy the games a little bit more this season. Okay, so let me just take you inside the locker room a little bit here. Um, I guess the the podium, so to speak. Now, um, Monty comes after the game, tells us, you know, he's asked like, "What's the message? What did you guys say to the players?" Um, and he basically says, "Keep a, a zero zero mentality, an OO mentality, as if the series is tied," is what he's referring to. Just basically like it's game one every night. You want to set that foundation, set the tone of the series all over again every single time that a game tips off and use the word desperation, you know, similar things to what we see him talking about on the sidelines when they cut to these wired segments and things like that. It's just play like basically your season depends on it. What's funny, none of that is surprising, right? What's funny is Jake Crowder meanders on over to the podium next. He's second up after Monty. I don't know if he heard Monty. I don't think he did because there was some time in between. He comes up. He's asked, you know, what what do you guys need to do? How's the series? How's the momentum? What's your vibe? And Crowder pretty much repeats Monty's message verbatim, which A, tells us Monty was not lying or making up or embellishing what he had said to the players post game, And also, it's a hell of a sign that these things are sinking in to the players if they come into the lock to the podium afterward and say exactly what you just said. So it's um, it speaks to how this team has played all throughout the postseason, right? When they've been at their best, it's because they come out with more energy, even in games that they're expected to win. Anthony Davis out and the Lakers on the ropes. And you'd think LeBron James, you know, Mark Gasol, these, these veterans, Dennis Schroeder, they've, they've got to come out. They're the defending champs. Of course they should come out and have more fight than the Suns. Not the case. Devin Booker puts his uh, sword through the chest of the, the Lakers, and that's just one example. We've seen it time and again, sweeping the Nuggets on the road. Huge, huge, huge. It's been the the personality of this team, and it's going to have to continue is, is the reality here as well um, because I just think it's – a game like this shows you that the Bucks are capable of a lot. Giannis playing at this level, their defense continuing to pose challenges that the Suns, again, have had answers for, but are still having to really think hard and tinker to figure this stuff out. That's a difficult thing to do. So this team is on the same page. They've always played like the more determined group. I've called it this organized chaos throughout the finals because I think that's an apt description for how they're able to attack while also staying to their principles. That's a very, very difficult needle to thread. But um, just, I guess, thinking about when this series flips to Milwaukee and why that OO mentality is going to be so huge is role players are going to play better. That's just the start of it. Forbes, Connaughton, Tucker, Holiday, all those guys are going to play better at home, you would think. And if Giannis can stay even close to what he was like tonight, 
it's going to be a very tough win, even if the Suns are obviously the favorites in this series. So again, that OO mentality, I think that's an, an a very simple and sort of like slogany way to say, but it, it's, it's apt. The Suns are younger. They're less experienced. Obviously nobody in these finals has a ton of finals experience, but the, the Bucks are the more veteran team. That's just a fact. So that seems like a good way to handle it. But a few things otherwise to watch that kind of play into that and are also just general things that I'm looking at. So Chris Paul tonight had six turnovers. At the same time, DeAndre Ayton less involved, I think, in the offense just because of Drew Holiday, frankly. Um, Holiday's pressure, he was maybe not full court press, but three quarter court press. They were trying to set screens really high to get Holiday off of, of, of Paul. But I think that th those turnovers and Ayton only having 10 points, both can be attributed at least in some part to Holiday's defense. If that continues, that's just another thing you're going to have to worry about. It's one more chess piece that the Bucks have played. And um, we already talked about the drop defense working better, the small lineups working better if they can find ways. Maybe Bobby Portis is a guy who has more success at home. Maybe if you can put him in position to you know, be the DeMarcus Cousins of this series. If, if he can do just enough on offense that for 15 minutes in a game, he can swing those minutes and, and have them be a big positive. I think at home, that's probably a, a more likely story. So again, those small lineups, they seem to be finding some stuff. Giannis is playing a little more aggressively. They're working, but is going to them more. Portis in there as well. You maybe start to find something a little bit. Um, the other thing, and then we'll get into some of the the Tory Craig stuff, because that's obviously a huge subplot here. But Milwaukee weathered the third quarter this time. That was the quarter when when Giannis had 20. They won the third quarter. In game one, that's when the wheels fell off and the Suns were able to really put the game away. That didn't happen tonight. So they're already, they, they I mean, they've been a resilient, trust me, have they been a resilient team all postseason long, but again, sort of reinforcing it tonight. So I think you just look at the Bucks aren't going away, right? And so you think about, again, uh, the role players thing at home, but also I think it's pretty likely the referees are going to, you know, have a more friendly whistle for Milwaukee in Milwaukee. That's pretty likely. And we already have Giannis having 30 free throw attempts in this series and 14 in the third quarter tonight alone. So more free throws for the Bucks is sort of a scary proposition if you're the Suns and another thing that can start to kind of, you know, chip away at the way that the Suns have been able to win. Foul trouble for Aiton or Sharich is start, or uh, I'm sorry, or Crowder is starting to get a little bit dicey to think about, which brings us to Tory Craig. Obviously, Dario Sharich remains out. He will be out for many months, unfortunately. Torn ACL, a very, very sad thing to happen to a heck of a dude and a contributor for a final team. You don't want that to happen. You especially don't want more injuries to pile up after that. And that's where we are now. Tory Craig left the game. I believe in the third quarter with a right knee contusion. It is what it is to a certain extent. Is he an integral piece to this team? No, but you're now down basically your backup four and your backup five. You already realized if you're Monty Williams that Frank Kaminsky is not going to be a great option, but he may be now your only option. So again, foul trouble. If they are going to get a more friendly whistle, that is compounded by these injuries who's going to play the Suns at this point don't really have the backup bigs. It's been a thin part of their, their roster all season. And so it's a bad t thing to have the injuries hit. So again, Aiton played 42 minutes. You're probably talking about six to 10 that you need to figure out. Like we were talking about with Portis, if he can come in and win those minutes, it starts to look bad. But at the same time, if the Suns can get some minutes out of Frank Kaminsky that work, they can downsize, maybe still have a small ball lineup with Craig and Johnson and Nader maybe. Um, that type of thing can work, but you're just, again, you add all these things together, the Bucks are not going away and they have these, they're, they're admittedly limited. There's fewer and fewer as each game goes on and the Suns figured this stuff out, but there are still some things where you can tell that the Bucks have some options left for them, especially as they go home. So that OO mentality coming into every game thinking, how can we dominate this? What energy level is, are we going to need? And we're not going to stop until the job's done. That's been the personality of these sons from start to finish. It's going to need to continue to be that.
I do want to close by saying, though, that at the end of the day, Milwaukee played much better. They got that Giannis game. They seem to be figuring some of these little things out, and yet they lost by 10 points. They just do not have an answer for the Suns' superstar backcourt, the Suns' collective IQ, chemistry, metal, and just somehow this this destiny that seems to be following them. That will close us off today, folks. I will leave you with that. Every reason to be optimistic. Game three is on Sunday. I will not be back with you until after that game. Brandon Duenas, of course, will join us because it is a Monday. The schedule God's doing us a favor there. I'll be coming from live from Chicago. I'm on a trip that graciously landed perfectly in this Suns schedule. I, like many of you, probably did not anticipate the Suns making the NBA Finals uh, two, three, four months ago when this trip got booked. So I will be coming to you from a hotel room, but we will be on YouTube at Locked On NBA over there, the, the Locked On NBA channel. And of course, everywhere you listen to podcasts. So if you are new, welcome, subscribe to the show. We'll be back Monday recapping game three. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend. Savor this win. Two down and two to go. We are not getting ahead of ourselves, but we can taste it. And I hope that that sticks with you all weekend. Until the next time.